Hello, Maria. Hello. Thank you for joining us um, in this interview. And I am certainly looking forward to talking a little bit more with you about your experiences as an IMC professional, especially right now in a very difficult time in all of our lives. And I know that uh, your marketing work is rooted in New York City. So um, what I hope that we can do in this time is to just kind of talk a little bit about your experiences and kind of how that has related to your work um, in, in a difficult time. Does that sound good? Sure. Okay. I'm happy to do that. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So I guess, you know, first things first, I was wondering if you could please um, give us a little bit of background. Of course, you know, if you want to share, you are an IMC alum as well as an undergrad alum of Bonaventure. But um, if you could give us a little bit of backstory and then help us understand um, where you are now in your current position. Sure. So I, I graduated from St. Bonaventure uh, with my bachelor's in journalism and mass communication in 2012. And I worked um, briefly as a journalist at a local newspaper in Western New York before I moved to New York City. And that was about eight years ago now, I think. Uh, I've been working for the Franciscan Friars of Holy Name Province, which is a Catholic religious order that's headquartered in headquartered in Manhattan, but has ministries all up and down the East Coast, including St. Bonaventure University, which is where, where I met the Friars. Um, in 2015, I believe, I decided that I would like to go back to school and, um, and like kind of expand my skill set, if you will, and I chose the IMC program at St. Bonaventure. I graduated in 2017, and um, one year later, I think, I was promoted from communications coordinator, which was my original position at Holy Name Province, to director of marketing, and I've been there ever since. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. And um, could you give us a sense, I know I had said to you kind of in advance, and not trying to be funny or sarcastic, but I think <laughs> when people think about a friary and, and they wonder, okay, what what could a marketing director be doing? So I looked at your site. I know there are lots of things that you do. There's a, yes. so many wonderful communication pieces, but could you give us a sense of your, of your role there? Sure, um, it's, it's actually a very common question. Um, so to get into it, it, it helps to understand what Holy Name Province is. Um, and if you're familiar with the Catholic, Catholic Church at all, not everyone may be, but most people have heard of a diocese, which kind of covers a sp specific geography, if you will. Um, a province also, also kind of covers a specific um, geography in the United States that we have seven provinces in the United States currently. Holy Name Province is located on the East Coast. Um, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have ministries from Boston to Tampa. Um, and a variety of ministries. We have soup kitchens, we have parishes, we have retreat centers, um, a, whole, a whole variety of things that we do. Um, each friar in the world belongs to a province and we happen to be headquartered in New York City. Um, as a religious organization, we have the same needs as any other organization out there. Um, we need someone to tell our story, we need to um, so um, I don't know if this is the right word. We, we require donations to continue to do our work. Um, and we, we um, need um, to invite people to join us in doing our work. So we need to invite men um, to become friars. We need to invite donors and volunteers. Um, uh, we're, we're a Franciscan organization, but our work could not be accomplished without a wide variety of people. Um, so my job is to help sort of facilitate those things and, and help us meet our, meet our goals as a organization. Could you speak specifically to some of the, the tasks that you would do as a marketing director in your day-to-day -day there? Sure. So um, I, I do a lot with, with our, in terms of updating our website, updating our social. Um, I, do, I kind of do some internal internal communications as well. Like we have friars living living 
um, across a wide ge geographic area, so it's important for us to keep them connected with each other. So I help, I help with that. Um, I I wear a lot of different hats because we're we're a small team, so I end up end up doing a lot. And um, really, that was one of the the great things about my my entire education at Bonaventure. I learned to write. I learned to edit. I I learned how to um, create strategies to get messages out there. Um, so I get to use all of all of those skills in what I'm doing now. Yeah, I, I see that a lot too from a marketing communications perspective. That mm -hmm. um, you know, as a practitioner myself, I, I know that you know our range has to keep increasing. Yes, it now does. It, you know, it's it's content marketing, which of course the background at Bonaventure was so helpful in that mm -hmm. data analysis and analytics, which. You know, yeah. uh, 10 years ago, we weren't as concerned. It wasn't as much part of our responsibility, but the scope of what we do continues to grow and expand. And you're right, I, I do see that continuing. Mm -hmm. um, so could you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, as the pandemic um, began to unfold and all of us were feeling very uncertain, and then further on, as you know, it became became clear that New York City was, you know, very much an, an epicenter of, of what was happening. Um, could you speak to how that was affecting your organization and also your role as a marketing communications person? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, having um, being in the center of of where the pandemic sort of really began to um, take root in the United States was a very interesting experience, not only because um, I'm working there, but, but just on, on your commute and everything, the entire, entire atmosphere was, was definitely shifting. Um, and for us uh, as an organization, um, we were looking at how best to continue to do our work right. given the reality that many of our physical locations um, were going to be shut down um, at least temporarily um, we we ministered a lot of churches and and when you can't gather um, in large groups uh, you you know all of our churches were were, were being closed um, thanks to the governors and um, and based on states states rules and regulations so um, you know usually the friars are reaching out to people um, and on a in a like face-to-face -face basis so all of a sudden that was taken away and we were really forced to um, go onto social media and start trying to reach out to people that way instead. Um, before all of this happened, um, I don't, I think very, very few, if any, of our parishes were live streaming um, masses and prayer services and things like that online um, because there, there really wasn't a need to before this. And now, I think every single parish, um, no matter how big, no matter how small, is online now and um, offering not only masses but different programs. People are getting really inventive and um, are trying to recreate the programs that they would offer normally face-to-face -face, um, in an online setting. So it's been really great to see how, how um, different groups around, uh, up and down the East Coast have been adapting to this. And then my role is Kind of saying, all right, I can see everyone um, creating their own different programs and everything. How do we um, now let people know that those programs are happening and uh, let them know what the province is doing as a whole to help um, get the word out there? Mm -hmm. And in that context, then, as you're, you know, ascertaining these very different um, realities and this is a crisis communications situation um, what are some of the principles that you know you took from that IMC education that were maybe not directly coming up in your mind but that you're sort of you're using those tools to assess the situation um, what do you think are some of those principles that were helpful to you not only in the initial 
reality. But even now, as you figure out, you know, how to really leverage the power of digital communications in maintaining relationships within your organization. I would say know your target audience, mm -hmm. um, know what they're going through right now, be very aware of what their wants and needs and challenges and, and desires are. Um, I think especially at the, be at the beginning of all of this, I was um, working with a, a group of uh, marketing communications um, directors from across the country who are involved in Franciscan communications. And one of them um, said this really well. She's like, we're just trying to push out a message of positivity right now. And I, I hadn't like consciously realized that at the time, but that's, that's what we were trying to do as well. Um, I think the Franciscans are in the business of, of giving people hope, mm -hmm. um, not, not only during the pandemic, obviously, but just in general, that's what we do. We, we, we bring um, love and welcoming to everyone that we meet. So, so our message really is, so appropriate to what people are going through right now like you know people are are scared you know people are anxious you know people are being bombarded with a lot of negativity in the news and what we can do is um we can recognize that people need that mess like, like they're looking for something hopeful right now they're looking for something positive they're looking um for something to help them move forward and um, our message just fits that fits that really well so mm -hmm. we've been able like by by looking at what our target audience needs we can we can deliver that yeah yeah i think that's so true and i know you know one of the things that we talk a lot about in imc is the importance of knowing knowing your audience, knowing your customer, mm -hmm. and also respecting them and building a meaningful relationship with your audience where I think, you know, yeah. inherent, inherent in a good relationship with your audience is a need for compassion, a need mm -hmm. for empathy, a need, need for understanding them where they are in the moment. Um, and I think that that's, you know, been something that we've all been striving to do and um, have you found it have you found that difficult have you found it actually surprising in some ways um, as you've gone about you know reaching out to people in a much more digitally based format has have there been things that have surprised you i i think i've I don't, I don't know if surprise per se, but it really confirmed that, that um, positivity is, is what mm -hmm. people need right now. Um, there, was, there was one post in particular that we, we shared um, a couple weeks ago now, I think. Um, some of our student friars created, uh, they're on TikTok, so they created um, this, one, of the, one of the dance challenge videos. Mm -hmm. And so we, we posted it on our Facebook page and it just like blew up. It went viral for, for us, um, at least in terms of engagement. Um, and that just kind of confirmed for me, like people are just looking for something uplifting right now. Yeah. Uh, and and that, that really just solidified, solidified it for me. Yeah, I, I agree. And I know you're emphasizing, you know, that positivity message. And so in your planning um, of your marketing content, how have you adjusted that given the situation? Are you changing messages in social um, and on your website, for example, or is your planning kind of remained the same because your message is positivity and hope? I think we've We've made a couple of little adjustments here and there, but overall it's, it's, it's remained the same. I think um, the way we talk about some of the services that we offer has changed a little bit. Um, uh, just in terms of word, wording and nuance, I think a little bit. I'm trying to think of an example. Um, we, have a, we have a lot of... Um, we have a lot of soup kitchen and food based um, ministries that we do. And I think before, you know, we could, 
talk about how, oh, like we helped like three, 300 guests this week came and visited our soup kitchen here and, and we served them this way. Um, and those, those numbers are, are getting bigger now, obviously, and unfortunately. And um, it's, even though before when we posted something like that, it might have sounded a little like it, it would have been positive news for us because look, like we're helping people and, and here's what we're doing. Now, I think the focus on those posts is, oh my goodness, look at how many people need help. It's, it's less about, you know, the work we've been doing and more people are getting, aren't, aren't, are seeing and focusing on the numbers of people who need help versus you know, the, the, the programs that we're offering. So we're, so we're adjusting wording and things like that to, to, um, to, to adjust the focus, yeah. I guess, a yeah. little bit. Um, that makes sense. No, it makes perfect sense. I was thinking of the word tone, you know, the tone mm -hmm. as we've approached yeah. some of that content, I think has, has really changed. Mm -hmm. um, and also, like you've said in a different way, but to provide help. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. In, in whatever yep. way that we can, I mm -hmm. think is, has been a powerful um, anecdote as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like our message has definitely shifted from look kind of like here, here's the impact of our work to we're here to help you. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. That's how we've, we've pivoted a little. Mm -hmm. And then, so then with that, do you think that, you know, before we started recording, I know that you and I were talking about, um, you know, how this reality has changed the way we go about our work, mm -hmm. um, that we are more human in, in so many ways. You know, I, I was joking with you about my children are usually sitting around me or crawling around me in Zoom meetings these days, and people are very gracious and compassionate. Mm -hmm. uh, from a marketing communications practitioner and professional perspective, um, do you think there are lessons here that we will take away? And what do you think are some of those? I think authenticity and honesty um, and the way that you communicate with your target audience is just going to be key in the future. Um, I think it with so many so many people unfortunately are 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 out of work right now, and that means that um like their spending power has has um diminished, and they're going to be very careful about what they spend their money on um at least in the near future and as an organization um your messaging needs to be laser focused on them and their needs and and building a true relationship with them. I think we're seeing a lot of commercials right now. I don't know if you've noticed this, but I feel like a lot of commercials right now are are kind of like drone footage and inspirational music <laughs> and we're all in this together and then they're like, PS buy a car. Um so so <laughs> it's it's not it's not necessarily, for me at least, not necessarily reaching me in an authentic way that makes me feel seen, and uh, and and it's not recognizing that I'm going through a difficult time right now necessarily. I I I, I just think in the future we're we're going to be even more focused on really being aware of our target audience and not only like what they're looking to buy, but what they might be going through as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. No. Anything, anything that's anything that's not focused on that is going to fall really flat, I think. Yeah. No, I think that's a, a wonderful point. And, you know, it's interesting. These are principles that we have always kind of preached, if you will, within integrated marketing communications and certainly at Bonaventure, you know, the importance of recognizing the human and, and compassion. Mm -hmm. um, but it is sad and, and still true that sometimes a situation like this is what is required to help shift that paradigm of, of how we approach things so that it isn't just superficial but that it is, has meaning in the long term. Mm -hmm. So I, 
I hope that that is true in this case. <laughs> yeah. Um, as we go about our work. So, well, is there anything else that you would like to share with us? Um, I just wanted to be sure to kind of give you some open space um, in your experience as a, as a marketing communications professional. It could be related to what's happening right now or what you think may happen in the future or, you know, just sort of some parting thoughts to share. I think, sort of sort of going back to what we said earlier it's just very important to be compassionate and empathetic and um keep those things in mind whenever you're you're forming any kind of messaging whether it's during a pandemic or not i think um it's those things that help make your overall messaging more human more authentic and um hopefully more successful um, mm -hmm moving forward in the future i think relationship building is 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 key for where we are and where we're going and and keeping those qualities in mind are, are going to be essential yeah. great well thank you so much for your time maria i really appreciate it and i wish you well as as you personally as well as professionally continue um to navigate all of this so Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy, happy to have this conversation with you. Go Banas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.